A very good day to everyone. My name is Chin Chin. I'm from the Taylor's University. I'm in the Faculty of Business and Law. I'm a senior law lecturer. Today, I'll read a book titled Mulan, and I hope you will enjoy this book. As you can see here, this version that I'm using is the Disney's version of Mulan. It's printed by Golden Book, adapted by Gina Ingoya, drawn by Jose Cadorna, and painted by Don Williams. Like a powerful dragon, the Great Wall of China winds its way across the land. It protects the country's farmland and villages, its family temples, and the mouths of bright green paddy fields. All along the wall, soldiers stand guard. They don't suspect this barrier was about to be crossed by an army of hoons led by the ferocious Shan Yu. <clears throat> One afternoon, a young woman named Mulan sadly returned home from the village. Making a good marriage, was the way a young Chinese woman brought honor to her family. But Mulan's meeting with the matchmaker that morning had ended in disaster. Her father, Fa Zhou, sat with her. With kind, loving words, he assured his daughter that she, like the late blooming blossom that proves to be the most beautiful of all, would bring honor to the family in her own time. Boom, boom, boom. Suddenly, a loud drum summoned everyone out of their homes. The Huns have invaded China, a messenger announced. One man from each family must serve in the imperial army. When the Fa family was called, Fa Zhou handed his cane to his wife and stepped forward. No, father, cried Mulan. She knew her father was as brave as he had been in his youth, but he was no longer strong. He would never survive a war. It rained hard that night. Mulan went to the family temple, lit incense and prayed to the ancestors. She made her decision. <clears throat> I will take father's place, she said. Mulan took Fajo's sword and cut her hair short. Then she put on his armor. Disguised as a man, she rode her horse, Khan, into the storm. A tiny dragon named Mushu raced after her. He wanted to regain his position as a guardian of the family. I will make Mulan a hero that will show the ancestors, he said. A cricket named Kriki hopped along beside him. I can help, he chirped. I'm a lucky cricket. Mulan isn't sure what to think about Mushu and Kriki, but she knew that she needed all the help she could get. When Mulan reached the army camp, she reported to Captain Shang. Shang was the son of General Li, leader of the Emperor's army. It was Shang's job to train the new recruits to be good soldiers. What is your name? Shang asked. Mulan made up a boy's name. P -p 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 Ping, she stammered. M -m -m My name is Ping. The recruits had trouble with the training exercises. The most difficult test was retrieving an arrow from the top of a tall column. No recruit had been able to do it. Clever Mulan finally figured out how to use strength and discipline to get the arrow. Everyone cheered, and in time, they would all learn to be good soldiers. One evening, Mushu and Kriki overheard Chifu, the emperor's aide, talking to Shang. I will report to your father that your men are not fit to be soldiers, he said. We can't let him do that, said Mushu. How will I make Mulan a hero if she never goes to a battle? So Kriki and Mushu wrote a note that delivered it to Chifu. The note read, 
You and your men are needed at the front at once. Shang set out immediately with his troop. Soon they came across a burned out village that had been attacked by the Huns. We must go to the Imperial City, he said. We are the Emperor's only hope. The men trudged on. Suddenly, hundreds of flaming arrows flew down at them. Shang Yun's Hun army was charging towards Shang and his men. Fire the cannons, yelled Shang. Soon, only one cannon was left. Mulan looked up at a snowy mountain peak and got an idea. She grabbed the last cannon and fired. The cannonball slammed into the mountain and shook the snow loose. An avalanche thundered down and swept the enemy away. Mulan leapt onto her horse and raced across the snow to Shang, who lay unconscious. She quickly lifted him onto Khan's strong back. When Khan skidded dangerously on the steep slope, but other soldiers helped pull them to safety. When Shang came to, he noticed that Mulan had been wounded. She was taken to the medic's tent. Later, the army medic reported startling news. The soldier isn't a man, she's a woman. Serving in the army as a woman was a crime punishable by death. You deceived me, Shang told Mulan angrily. But I will spare your life because you saved mine. The troops marched off, leaving Mulan behind with Khan, Mushu, and Kriki. Mulan was about to head home in disgrace. But then she saw Shan Yu and five of his soldiers at the top of a cliff, heading toward the Imperial City. They were still alive. Mulan galloped up to the city. There she found Shang and told him that the Huns were on their way. You lied once, Shang said. Why should I believe you now? Later, during the victory ceremony, Shang Yu captured the emperor. Mulan saw Shang frantically trying to break into the palace. I have an idea how we can get in, she called. Mulan dressed her three soldier friends, Yao Ling and Chen Po, in women's clothes so that they could fool the Hun guards. Shang followed them and they quickly overpowered the guards. On the palace balcony, Shang Yu waved his sword at the emperor. Bow to me, he demanded. At Mulan's signal, the rescuers stormed into the room. The emperor was taken to safety. Shang Yu was very furious. He charged toward Mulan. Mulan ran in search of Mushu. Quick, she told him. I have a plan, she sent him off with Kriki to the fireworks tower. Mulan ran across the palace, making sure that Shang Yu was following her. Then she led him onto the roof. Mushu landed on a roof with a rocket tied to his back and Kriki lit the fuse. The rocket crashed right into Shang Yu. Mushu jumped off, but the rocket carried Shang Yu away toward the fireworks tower. Kaboom! A spectacular fireworks explosion dazzled the city. Shang Yu was no more. The emperor bowed to Mulan. He gave her Shan Yu's sword and placed his pendant around her neck. You are a hero, he said. You have brought great honor to your country and family. Then the emperor asked Mulan to join his council, but Mulan chose to return to her parents instead. So Mulan was back home enjoying a happy reunion with her family when Shang arrived. He had realized that Mulan was a very special person indeed. Would you like to stay for dinner? Mulan asked. Shang accepted with a smile. Mushu was ready to celebrate. He was a guardian once more. Send out for eight rolls, he cried. That's the end of the story.
I hope that you enjoy this particular story about a brave girl that actually is from a Chinese legend in the ancient times. You can see that she has saved her nation and also to make the family proud. Reading is important because it opens up our mind and gives us a very, very different and diverse perspective. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much.